Stanley Hauerwas is arguably the most influential theologian in the English-speaking world currently. He, in 2001, was named by Time magazine as America's best theologian. Hauerwas spent most of his teaching career at the universities of Notre Dame and Duke. He's recently stepped down from Duke, but even in his retirement, he continues to write and to speak at conferences and to um, speak at churches as well. So he, he's certainly a, an, an ongoing presence. Um, his main contributions to theological thought um, fall into three different areas. The first is narrative theology, which is a way of organizing an entire theological framework around uh, the scriptural narrative. So this is an alternative way of doing theology to um, organizing it more around abstract concepts or doctrines. Um, the second main area where Hauerwas has contributed to theology is to think about all of, of theology as um, responsible to the church. So for him, the church is the primary audience or the, the primary group that theologians need to address. So this is an alternative way um, of approaching theology as opposed to thinking of the main public of theology as, as people in general or um, the public apart from the ecclesial community. The third um, main area in which Hauerwas has, has contributed to theology um, is in the area of virtue ethics. This is a way of, of thinking about ethics that um, organizes everything around the, the type of person uh, that, that one should be, the type of virtues that one should embody. And again, this is um, a, a different way of thinking about um, ethics than um, a deontological system, um, which is a, a way of thinking about ethics as organized around a, a system of, of rules that purport to be universal, so a system of, of norms that everyone would need to follow. Um, Hauerwas has had success both at the academic level, certainly having very prestigious academic jobs and giving um, major series of lectures such as the, the Gifford Lectures in Scotland um, on the subject of natural theology. Uh, but he's also been quite influential at the popular level. Um, he, he was recognized by Time magazine as America's best theologian and he's also written in, uh, some books that have, have sold quite well on the popular level, including Resident Aliens. Um, so he has certainly been an influential figure within the academy, but he has also had a, a, a broader following. It makes sense to think about Hauerwas's thought and life together um, rather than separately, um, especially for someone like Hauerwas who has, has emphasized that the purpose of theology is to form human beings um, to be a, a certain kind of person. Um, it, it's, it's probably the best way into thinking about his theological thought um, to, to think actually about his upbringing and his education and his, his work. Um, so we'll begin with his um, years growing up in Texas. He um, was certainly influenced by both of his parents. Um, he has recently written a memoir which is entitled Hannah's Child um, and this is against the background of the, the biblical story of Hannah who was yearning for, for a child and prayed to God that she would be blessed with a child and then promised to give that child to God in, in, in service to God um, if, if she were to receive him. So Hauerwas' mother um, who married reasonably late in life prayed a similar prayer herself. And the child that she was given was, was Stanley Hauerwas. And she promised God that, she, that, that he would be um, dedicated to serving him and actually passed on the story to Hauerwas himself uh, when he was old enough to, to understand. And Hauerwas relates in his, his memoir that um, he felt at that point a, a bit of pressure um, that his life was to be one that was dedicated to serving God and um, that this choice had been made for him even before it was a choice that, that he could make himself. Um, but in due course, uh, this is a decision that 
that he followed through on. Um, so he's, he's certainly influenced by, by his mother, and he speaks in his memoir about um, the different ways in which she influenced him and the relationship that they had. Um, it was a relationship with pluses and minuses. He, he speaks um, more positively about his relationship with his father, um, Kofi Harwas, and mentions that um, he was a, a genuinely Christian man, was um, completely unpretentious in his faith, um, and was, was certainly a model of, of gentleness um, to Harwas, and, and taught him many things. Um, not least uh, the craft of uh, laying brick, which I'll talk about more in a minute. Um, in addition to being influenced by his, his parents growing up, Howard Walsh was also influenced by um, the church community in which he grew up. Um, he attended Pleasant Mound United Methodist Church, um, and he, he speaks uh, again in his memoir about how he um, was, was encouraged year after year and, and Sunday after Sunday um, to experience conversion, to be, to be saved, as he puts it. Um, but he never experienced this. He um, didn't feel like he should fake it, but um, he, he was just very conscious that this experience that he was supposed to have, according to um, the leaders of his church, is, is not one that he himself had. But he continued to be part of the church, and actually at the age of 15, um, he made a different decision, not one to be saved, but one to dedicate his life to God and to serving God and, and teaching. Um, so he, he comments, ironically, in his memoir that um, he thought that if he made this decision, that he would, in a sense, force God's hand, that he would be saved in order that he could um, be someone who is, was serving God. So, so he's, in his own faith, um, certainly unsettled at this point. Um, he's made one decision, which he hopes will lead to something else, but never exactly does in it. But he goes forward. He moves forward from there and tries to um, think through these issues that he was introduced to in his um, church community growing up. Throughout his entire career as a theologian, Howard Wass um, places a, a great deal of emphasis on the church and the church as a community being the really essential framework for thinking theologically. And this, this has a, a very concrete reference. I mean, he's, he's thinking in the first instance um, about the ecclesial community in which he grew up, Pleasant Mound. Um, so this is, this is something that sticks with Hauerwas um, through the entirety of, of his career in, in, in almost every book. This is a prominent theme. Um, another factor from Hauerwas' um, years growing up that became tremendously important for him later on um, is his induction into the craft of, of bricklaying. And as, as I mentioned, he learned this from his father, who was um, quite a skilled bricklayer himself, um, and taught the trade to Stanley Hauerwas at, at a very early age. Hauerwas says that he, he began laying brick at the age of nine. So as a, a young child, he um, comes to the job site, and he doesn't know how to do the job, obviously, but he is he's taught there um, by a master craftsman, his father and, and also others. Um, and he himself is the apprentice, so he learns not by being taught in a school setting, um, not through formal education, but by being an apprentice. Um, and apprenticeship actually becomes a very significant theme in his theology. Um, so Hauerwas will actually say in his courses that he doesn't want students to think for themselves, he wants them to think like he does. Um, so this is his way of certainly being provocative and um, getting students' attention, uh, but, but there's a serious point behind it, which is that um, the best way to do theology, the real way to do theology, is um, by means of 
students taking the part of an apprentice and deferring to what they can learn from master theological thinkers, people who are farther along and more accomplished. The other thing that um, learning how to lay brick taught Hauerwas early on in his life is simply to work and to work um, with dedication and to work with, with real energy. Um, my own most um, significant memory of, of Stanley Hauerwas, and I was a, a master's student at, at Duke myself for a year, um, is simply seeing him in the Duke gym um, doing sit-ups. And at, at the time, he was probably about 65 years old. Um, so he's, he's much older than most of the other people there. Um, but he was outworking all of these other undergraduate students who are a third his age. And he, um, he approached his work very much in the same spirit. Um, he has a, a, just a phenomenal work ethic. And this is something that has allowed him to write and produce um, in the way that he has over the course of a, a very extended career. Um, so there are a number of factors that um, from Hauerwas's uh, childhood have, have marked him and formed him um, to be the type of theologian that he um, has been and, and continues to be. In thinking about Stanley Hauerwas's life, it's certainly important to think about his um, educational background. He attended a university um, in Georgetown, Texas at Southwestern University. Um, he, he says in his memoir that um, he first realized that he grew up quite poor, actually, when he came to Southwestern and was around students from a more 